Okay, so I did a bunch of other projects, but I uh, made a little room on my phone for some more video. Uh, Adam Maxwell, he uh, done some horse trading, he works at a ranch pizza, he's put on a couple swap meets, he needed a rock lobster stem that I scored out of a different swap meet. We swapped some parts, I've gone and bought some stuff. He messaged me to see, so fun, to see if I had a cutter for fork threads. He's got an old mountain bike fork that uh, he needs just like a quarter inch more threads. So it's probably off, you know, a frame that's a size or two too big. Um, so the threads really don't go down enough for the upper headset cup to thread down far enough. That's pretty common. So I get to bust out the old bling bling Cobra uh, tool kit with, by Silva, by Cobra, by Campy, whatever, it's all the same. Um, Cobra made it for everybody. And I got that bling bling. We'll see if we can do it in my stand. Depends on how big the fork is and how awkward it is. Uh, if not, we'll go do it in the vise with a, like a Yakima rack part that I like to use for this. I like doing it in the vise. But we might do the stand for more room and for a camera. But got that really expensive rapid tap from last time. So let's check it out. Okay, so Adam showed up. He brought the fork. It is a super cool old, you say it's a Bianchi fork? Yeah, it's a Bianchi fork. That you had for like ever? Yeah, I think it's from a Bianchi Grizzly. There's like no paint left on it at no, all. Yeah. <laughs> I put some uh, plastic on my stand just to try and keep the leather from getting full of oil. I got some junk down here for it to drip on. Because you use too much oil, you don't use enough tap fluid, you will dull your taps and it sucks. This stuff's expensive, but taps are like four or five hundred bucks. Versus, you know, 14, 15 bucks for this junk. Oil, 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 oil. Oil, oil, oil. I just realized I've been doing some weird stuff because I've been, you know, I haven't really worked on bikes much for like five years. Mm -hmm. Just started again. I think I like to go like this. I wonder if this is supposed to go this way. I don't know, I'll play with it. So this, this fork's been nice timing heater. So this fork's already been cut off previously, so it's going to be a little trickier to get it to start, so we're going to be really careful. Because the tap is so sharp and so nice that uh, without much pressure at all, it's really easy to cross thread. This sure seems like it's going on. We're already down like halfway. We're not really cutting yet, we're just chasing until we get to the bottom of the threads. But when you do any cutting, you want to do about one full turn and then back it off a quarter turn to knock the chips out in these big giant open holes. Otherwise they'll bind up and get in your threads and mangle things. Oh, this cutter is so much nicer than my old one. This tool set, my old one was so dull when I got yeah. it. I just learned how to use a doll and it was fine. It's a pretty great find though. Yeah, this new one is like, everything's razor sharp. Yeah. Some tools have never been used. I'm like, oh my God. It's been shockingly nice. <laughs> yeah, some guy in Bend, uh, he had an eBay business for like 25 years. He said he just bought out shops and went out of business and just went low them on everything they couldn't sell and put it all on eBay. And he said uh, he got this from a retired guy who used to own a shop. He didn't buy this until after he actually retired. <laughs> and uh, we'll use it at home a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. Still sharp enough for an 80 year old to use it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> You can get the tool sharpens. Andy Newlands the Strawberry Cycles. He's here, he makes land tools and uh, dropouts and lugs and stuff. And he works for the machine shop. He trained how to sharpen all these tools because he doesn't do it anymore. Oh, and we make contact. Get real tight and see if we can turn it. Oh, that's what I was afraid of. I have an idea. It's just spinning in there. But uh, we could probably. It's a nice fat round leg. Yeah, and then butt it up the other side. Yeah, and then butt it up the other side. Let's see if that works. Yeah. Hey, alright. Here at cutting physics. and chipping. I know, physics is cool. I wish I was smart and good at it. <laughs> yeah. Look at them chips start to show up. 
dang. God, this is so easy. This used to blister my hands if I hold on. Yeah. Start to smell that rabbit tap. <laughs> I probably should have marked it or measured it to really know where it here. If we go too far, it probably doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Probably in a quarter inch. We'll probably go a little farther just to be safe. Better safe than sorry. Seriously. It'd be fun to write all at home. I'm going to put it in. You need one more thread. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's already been on two different bikes to then modify it for a third life, maybe a fourth, I don't know. That's my favorite thing to do. Make old high-end parts uh, work and last instead of buying new cheap shitty parts that are like insanely expensive and mm -hmm. hoping they hold up. Thanks. Yeah. With, uh, some extra long reach brakes so I can convert from 26 inch to 650. <laughs> I miss having my torches on my frame builder stuff. Just pop them up. Yeah, I'm like, let's fucking swap some bosses out real quick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm gonna get a um, set of Paul Moto lights for it and those are like designed for being able to do those conversions. Oh yeah, to roll the break up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's always cool. I know I just got a nice fork I want to use, but it's for 27 inch. I'm like, oh, it would take me 20 minutes. Well, probably take two hours to to fix it if I had my stupid torches and all my stupid stuff. I might take it over to my old friend Mark Belladonna's. Oh yeah. I see, so running it this way made it start easier. It Heads down, up. but it held all the trash in there, so I let it fall out. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, probably better to do it this way. Looks like we're probably out of like an inch. Yeah, that'll, I think that'll be plenty. That'll be sweet. I used to have acid brushes for this to try and flick all the stuff out. You have like a little wire brush or something. Yeah. I mean, even, even honestly, it's pretty clean. There's probably not a lot of junk in there. I'm debating on if I strip the fork and clear coat it or just keep the patina. Patina's kind of badass. It's, it's kind of cool. Pretty, and it's pretty unreplaceable, though, just rock chips. Yeah. You can't yeah. fake that with sanding. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> it's pretty dope. Stem. Ooh! Stemmy! 1991 Colloy that's got a real high stack to it. Oh yeah! Be great for, you know, doing a little townie setup on a road bike. Yeah! I love tall stems for that stuff. That's great! Thanks, man. Yeah, no problem. Ugh, I'm getting oil everywhere. Well, a little protective for the rest of the winter. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I had a rack on it too that was um, using uh, like little mounts that go onto the fork so you can like see where the rack was on the fork too. Here the oh, rack. clamped on? Yeah, oh clamp yeah, on the little, little two stripes. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty funny. Probably most of the oil off. I mean, you got enough on there if you're lucky. That's not too big to get a walking washer on. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll be fine. Okay, good. Sick. It's like, if not, there's no easy way of adding that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without a machine shop. Yeah, yeah. If you try it with a Dremel, but you probably just fuck it up. <laughs> I, have a, I have a keyway, I have a file I wrote keyway on. It's like uh -huh. the right width for that. We can put yeah, it in yeah. device and real slowly <laughs> yeah, do that for about go. 10 or 15 minutes. It's usually make it a little longer. Cool, man. Oh, yeah, look at that. I guess we should show it off with the camera. So it's been cut down already, so there's not a lot of slot there. And it ended a little bit below the slot, so we... Probably had it, yeah, yeah, half inch, three quarters, and you can kind of tell from where it went old and dirty to where it went new. So 
few chips. A few chips in there right about where it started. It'll be fine. Yeah. Sweet. Fork threads extended. Now it'll fit into a, a on, smaller on, frame. On bike. Yeah, on bike. <laughs> yeah. Or you can go to eBay and spend 80 or 90 dollars on a fork that's off a 20 dollar bike. <laughs> lots of lots of things to do. Or luckily we live here in Portland where we have bike farm and they have like 5,000 forks right now. Yeah, exactly. And they are like five dollars. The prices there are just totally crazy. I thought about swinging by there to take a look, but since this one was already physically at the house, I was like, it's so close. <laughs> <laughs> Well, cool. Um, do you want some cashola or a free pizza? Or... If you, yeah, dude, if you want to give me more pizza, I would totally do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, cash would be cool too if you don't. Or I, I actually whatever. Don't I don't care. Hard cash on me, but I can do oh, Venmo if you'd like. No. Or I can get you a whatever on the house next time you're in. Sick. Your pizza is really good, and it's a good excuse to <laughs> yeah. ride my bike up to that neighborhood. Yeah, we can get you a free pizza and some beers. That's totally cool. Yeah, I wasn't even thinking about that. I was just thinking about how to end this video. <laughs> <laughs>